Today I would like to touch the topic of the tree of life as embodied in the king or queen. We read in Douglas Estes the tree of life themes in the biblical narratives published by Brill. In a seal from Uruk, 3rd to 2nd millennium before modern era, the goddess Inanna addresses her king, comparing him with the mesh tree, the tree of life. My king, mesh tree, which faithful, faithfully bears fruit, shining full of allure, son to his mother and father. My king, I will make you shine like mesh tree. Amaushum Galanna may uncreate life for you. Now, what is the tree of life of Sumeria, Akkad, Assyria, Babylon, of Egypt when Lady Sapseshat and Toph inscribed the Pharaoh with the divine qualities and names? You may call it the cradle of gods or the way that a mortal throughout his toil and life, embraced by the gods, meeting the divine halfway, becomes an immortal posthumously, thrice great as Hermes Tris Magistos, with the descent, the virtuous life and ascent posthumously. So there is this story of the descent of Lady Ishtar to the underworld as she leaves all her precious jewels and her cloth while she goes through the 14 gates of hell. What is it for? Or the descent during the Aloysian rise, or the descent of Osiris to Amenta. It is all a common cycle that leaves an imprint for a mortal to follow. In other words, the ambrosia of gods is that dense matter of chaos that you recover in order to forge a diamond. The interplanetary spaces, the cosmic abysses, that is where you acquire the transformation of consciousness. You need to travel there in soul in order to lead to a proper transformation of the daimonic self, of the daimon spirit, the divider of fates, the fate giver. So what is the next stage if we assume that someone successfully descended to the underworld and then returned with a trophy on earth? Now this is where exactly the true path starts. So through tests and ordeals, both nature, the demonic realms and the divine test while expanding na nature of the mortal so it may skim the greatest of his movements, of his nature, of his life, the summation, totality of his life, that are correlated both with the world of nature, the world of the planetary spheres in Chaldean order, from the solar nature as a star to Saturn. So while you progress through all these planets and win the qualities or expand the qualities being taught the qualities of those planets, there is something more happening in the process. Now, for every successfully expanded quality that is compatible and correlated with the planetary spheres, you receive an imprint, a seal, on your right lung, left lung, solar plexus, throat, eyes, ajna, and the crown. So the tree of life, the mesh tree, is proportionally scaled for mortal occult biosexual psychopneumatic apparatus. In other words, it is scaled for mortal. It is not that human is center of everything or that it is an absolute thing. It is a divine beast, an animal that may rectify according to very complex parameters. So let's say that we have a gentleman or a gentle lady that successfully through multiple years passed through ordeals and in various times, in various spaces, these centers were preserved. Now this creates a matrix of their totality of nature that are compatible with those planetary natures. It is a continuous teaching. They cannot be perfect at all times, but when they reach perfection even for a moment and that is preserved, that is the output. So at different times in life these divine worthy qualities 
are preserved and so to say uploaded to the God body that is prepared by the Anuna God. The God body receives seals of these qualities as if individuating it. In this continuous toil what is decided as worthy of wearing the robes of a new God, a new Goddess is preserved. A mortal doesn't become a God in flesh. He may develop some skills, some qualities, but still he is prone to decay and transience. However, death triumphant, with death the cadaver, the shell, the Dionysian tomb is cast away, and the spirit acquired in the abyss inhabits the new Godhead that is made and individuated from those divine qualities, yet attuned to the divine assembly with the greater order as it walks with the gods that elevated the mortal. So interpretation, it is a continuous interpretation, translation of a mortal into a god, a goddess. The mortal mind and body is cast away, and only the finest points of via regia, the way of philosophers, of kings and queens, are preserved. Think of it as a divine catalyst of the finest qualities that lets the cosmic expression flow through it. And uh, this was a summary of practice, practical aspects, omitting all the mythology, the ways and methods, and the narrations associated with it. Do I know how it works? I don't. I'm a practitioner. I live through it, therefore I convey what I intuit it and think may be appropriate to convey with the Socratic irony that what cannot be said or conveyed nevertheless must be so. So forever I am grateful to the dragon gods of Sumer and Babylon and of Egypt, the great Igigi Anuna, for facilitating this way for me and for those few others who decided to step up on the path. Held the golden wings. Thank you.